Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome. We join our hearts and voices with believers throughout the world, giving thanks to the God of all creation. May the spirit of the risen Lord surround us in this holy place and transform us by our sharing in today's Eucharist. There will be a special collection today to support the rescue and relief efforts underway in earthquake ravaged Haiti. Kindly silence all cell phones and electronic devices before we begin our liturgy. Our opening hymn will be number 403, Lord of All Hopefulness. That's number 403. Please stand.
O God, who calls the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command, and to desire what you promise, that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel and Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in the ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The gods your fathers served beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord, our God, who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt and out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our eyes, and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.
the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. <clears throat> Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself the Savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church, and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor, without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one who hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. where 
his, his, some of his disciples decided to leave him because he was teaching something that was too hard. One of the things that when the Bible says God created us in his image and likeness is our ability to choose, to make choices. God never created us and programmed us to, to serve Him. We have to make that choice. Right from creation. When He made everything and made Adam and Eve, He gave them choice. So look, you can eat everything in this garden, but there is one tree, you shouldn't eat it. Well, you can eat it if you want, but the day you eat it, you will die. That was choice. And of course, they abused that right and they ate it. And the effect has come to all of us through original sin. The days of Noah. But Noah was making the ark. He didn't force people into the ark. He told them about it. Some got into the ark and were saved. Some said, ah, oh, this is not possible. And they made light of it. Okay. When God called Abraham, he had the choice to say no, but he followed God's voice and became our father in faith. And on and on the prophets came and God called people and people would respond and some would not respond. And when Jesus came, he invited people to follow him. Some did instantly. Matthew, and before that, Peter and his brother Andrew, James and John, they followed, and some said no. Some, some, someone said, let me go bury my, my father before. Let me go say goodbye to my family. And people had excuses. That is the human life. That is how God made us. That we are able to make choices. By the choices we make, will be the consequence of the judgment that we will face before God. Because of our ability to choose, God will hold us responsible for the use or abuse of our free will. In fact, in the Second Vatican Council, one of the, the last documents we dealt with, the Gitatis Humana, which deals with religious freedom, and by extension, human freedom, Second Vatican Council acknowledged that no one can be forced through coercion, you can be made through coercion to serve or worship in a certain religion. And ultimately, the Catholic Church, although we have the fullness of the truth, we cannot force people to come. It's a matter of choice. Today, in our first reading, we meet Joshua who has led the people into the promised land and he puts before them the need to be sure of what they want to do. They have entered the land, they have shared the land and he himself was about to pass on. But choose today the God that you want to serve. You can serve the gods of your ancestors before they came to meet Yahweh. You can serve the gods of the Egyptians, or the gods of the nations that you have overthrown on your way. You can serve Baal and Ashtaroth. You can serve any of the multitudes of gods around here. But be sure of your choice. But it so pleases you. You can also serve you, Yahweh. But as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. The people said, God forbid. We also will serve Yahweh. And Joshua wanted them to be sure of the consequences of their decision because if they failed, there would be consequences. And yet the people made the choice to serve the Lord. In the gospel, after Jesus had given his teaching on the bread of life, and the people were Questioning, they knew him that Jesus was the son of the carpenter, and Mary and his brothers and sisters were with them, and they were saying, No, 
we, first of all, we know you too well. What do you mean by you give us your body and your blood? <laughs> and then it was also difficult for them because they couldn't comprehend how they were to eat the body the blood of another human being. They didn't understand it. And this was too hard for them. And so they left. Jesus answered 12, will you also leave? I mean, you would think, Jesus, you have come to build a kingdom on this earth, and you had wanted to follow you, and you were happy that people were following you, and now they are all going away. You would think Jesus would be bothered and say, well, Peter, James, and John, and the rest, please don't go away. Please take your time. Let me explain to you. But Jesus didn't say that. You also want to go. It's your call. It's your choice. Say, Lord, to whom shall we go? To whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. And we have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. To whom shall we go? We have no word. You see, in the Catholic teaching, we call that a fundamental option. That decisive moment when we decide that we are going to follow God no matter what. Sometimes we may fault the apostles for them. But that choice, that it's only in Jesus that there is salvation, never left their minds and their hearts. Was the option they chose. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, a lot of the teachings of the church has made many people to leave. When there was the teaching on contraception, I was too young, I wasn't even born anymore. <laughs> but I heard many people left. <laughs> and today, some people still have a problem with the church's teaching on that. This is too hard. What about abortion? Oh, the church doesn't understand what to say. These are all men. They don't know what women go through. This is too hard. Even today's second reading, interhuman relationship, love, respect, and service. In marriage, in the church, in our workplaces, in our communities, everywhere we find ourselves. We all need to have at the back of our minds that we need to love, we need to respect each other. We need to serve each other. Nobody is the boss here. We are all one. We are brothers and sisters. But I know when they were reading it, especially the part I said, women be somewhat made not this is too nah. <laughs> This is not for 21st century. <laughs> Paul was he saying women should become like the dogma, men to walk or not. He's just Telling us about how family should work with love, respect, and at each other's service. That's it. Is this too hard? Probably for some people. And so many teachings. If you want to follow me, go sell all that you have, give to them, go and come follow me. The rich young man went back and never came. It's too hard. You see, Christianity is not the religion of pampering people. When Jesus fed the multitude, they came back, people have kept feeding them and telling them nice things. Oh, you are in my palm. I will never forsake you. You could have been healing all the people and they will keep following him. No. You see, St. Paul said something. He said, some things are for babies. When you come into Christianity initially, you receive the milk. As you get on in Christianity, you will need the bones. That's what St. Paul says. We are all mature Christians. So the choice we have made to follow Jesus, we should keep to it. Nothing should get us to turn our backs on our God. A lot of things are happening in our church today, and, and we know what is going on, and and the abuse cases and people are angry with the church and some have left already. Ah, we can't sit in a church where the priests are abusers. Will you also go? 
you also want to be. Or you believe that despite the imperfections in the church, this is still where God's spirit and power dwells in its fullness. This is where we have the source and summit of everything that can bring us to God's kingdom. Do you believe this church has the words of eternal life, not the words of this life to make your ears feel good and your heart joyful, but that's the words that to bring you to the kingdom of God? It doesn't matter what is happening. Lord, we know this is your church. We're going to stay with you because we know you have the words of eternal life. May the Lord help us to stick to our choice, our fundamental option, to be with Him through thin and thick until one day we see His face in His kingdom in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shall we now rise and profess our faith? I believe in one God, the Father of all mankind, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from God, true God from true God, begotten not made, not substantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men, for us salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, who was incarnate from the Virgin Mary, and he became man. For our sake, he was crucified by the conscious fire, he suffered death and was buried, he rose again and the day, and according to the Spirit, he ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. The scripture will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified. And I spoke to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Confident that our merciful Father knows us and hears all our prayers, we turn to Him with our petitions. Our response will be, Lord, hear our prayer. For the Church, the living body of Christ throughout the world, and for all who are commissioned to shepherd the Lord's flock, especially our Holy Father, Pope Francis, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the Afghan people and the catastrophic situation involving their war-torn nation, for members of our own armed forces who have served there over the past 20 years, for those killed or injured and their loved ones, for our fellow citizens and Afghan allies trapped inside a country in chaos, and for the future of a nation that has seen so much pain, violence, grief and tears, we pray to the Lord. <laughs> For victims of natural disaster, especially the thousands killed or injured in Haiti, we pray to the Lord. Lord that our divine physician will guide us through this troubling surge in the COVID-19 pandemic, granting healing to the sick, comfort to those who mourn, and resilience to our medical personnel and first responders we pray to the Lord, Lord that public health officials, school administrators, principals, and parents will be given an abundance of wisdom in making prudent decisions about the beginning of the new school year. We pray to the Lord, Lord for our sisters and brothers who are sick or recovering from illness, injury, addiction, or surgery especially Ruth Turk, we pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord of life will raise up all who have crossed the threshold of death, 
we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We have been asked to remember Paul Hartman, Jude Wilkin, and the intentions of the Prima family in a special way as we place our gifts on the altar. Let us also pause now to recall our own personal intentions. For these we pray to the Lord. Lord God of endless ages, you are the source of all our good. Fill us with the grace of your Holy Spirit and help us to be more perfect imitators of your Son Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now pray with me, my dear 
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Amen. For the praise of the Lord, for I am the Lord of the O Lord, who gave for yourself a people by adoption, grant through, through the one sacrifice offered once for all, Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gift of unity and peace in your church. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly really right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father. Almighty and eternal God, for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us a Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you love in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours, that by sinning we have lost disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As in the exaltation, we are playing. Ascension into heaven. 
And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her most chaste spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Lawrence and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis our Pope, and John our Bishop, the other of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
sisters in Christ, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Please join in singing our communion hymn, which is number 592. Your words are spirit and life. That's number 592.
that's great. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the announcement. We will be offering a special blessing to the children of the parish for their safe return to school at all the Masses on Labor Day weekend. Children attending the 9 a.m. Mass are invited to bring their backpacks, which Father will bless as well. I remember that. The training session for new extraordinary ministers has been scheduled for late September. Have you ever considered distributing the Lord's body and blood to your fellow parishioners here at St. Lawrence? Those who already do will tell you how tremendously fulfilling it is. More information and training dates can be found in this weekend's board. All interested parishioners must contact the rectory as a first step. The sacrament of anointing the sick will be offered immediately following the 9 a.m. Mass this Wednesday, August 25th. Our Knights of Columbus are sponsoring a fishing trip out of Cap Tree State Park on Saturday, September 18th. Flyers with information can be found in the doors. The space is limited, so RSVP as soon as you can. Kindly leave your offering in one of the baskets by the doors. Your week-to-week -week generosity to our parish has been so gratifying and is so much appreciated. Be sure to take home a copy of the bulletin as you leave today. Wash or sanitize your hands at the earliest convenience. And enjoy the rest of the weekend. A moment, please. Um... I just want uh, to carry the gratitude of my people back in Ghana to all of you, uh, to Father Brian, Father Tom, Mr. Pat, and everybody, and all of you, my dear people, for your generosity. So um, we are so grateful and so happy. The money that you sent um, has taken care of the sanctuary, which was burnt, it has been redone very beautifully. I sent pictures to Father Brian, and he also took care of uh, five of the windows. I think you can see copies in today's bulletin. Um, the, the name is boldly written on it, donated by um, St. Lawrence Catholic Church. So we are grateful. Uh, my people are very grateful. Uh, we are praying for you that the generosity you have shown, the Lord himself will replenish your resources. And you also continue to keep them in your prayers as they continue with their re re uh, rebuilding, you know, uh, restructuring or whatever. So uh, now the main way that is left, they are doing now is the sacristy, which they are rebuilding it. They want to modernize it, so uh, that's the last kind of way that is left. So in, in the nutshell, I just want to say thank you for God and thank you for the Church of St. Francis Xavier. They are grateful and they are praying for you and keep them in. Your friends. Thank you very much. And all the other things were donated. You have to add that the books, the vessels, the vestments, and everything. <laughs> everything comes together. And they are very happy. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The Almighty God bless and keep you. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. And now, best is ended. Our recessional hymn will be number 728, Lead Me, Lord. That's number 728. 